What is going on, everybody? It is Tommy from the Peanut Gallery, and we are here with the seventh installment of the Kingpins Fantasy Podcast. Today, we have myself, Pat, and an unfamiliar face here, and I'll let you introduce yourself. <laughs> All right. My name is Jesse. I've, uh, I've been under behind the scenes at the Peanut Gallery since its inception, and uh, I'm ready to take my talents <laughs> to the big stage <laughs> the podcast um, yeah for some contentious takes but in the end i think i kind of have an unparalleled gut for making the right decision and hopefully hopefully i can shed some light and help you all out with your fantasy teams yeah it's the um the podcast debut for jesse uh, we're all excited ryan who's usually our host here was unable to make the show Last night, we were trying to film a podcast, and he spilt water all over his computer and broke his laptop. Um, so no Ryan today. I'm sure that's what happened. <laughs> the show must go on. That's um, true. Yeah, Jesse's a member of our eight-team dynasty league, so he's got, he's got the dynasty insight. He's a redraft fantasy football player. And unfortunately for him, he is a New York sports fan. Yeah, I was I was about to say not I, even I, I feel so comfortable right now. We got the Giants majority and Tommy <laughs> Tommy's our little bitch right now. We we could say whatever we want to him and it's just it's just one voice. What what what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? True. <laughs> yeah, so we got two Giants fans. Um so we might hear we might have a little <laughs> New York bias on the show tonight, but no um, facts. only facts. Yeah, <laughs> only facts on this podcast. Let's kick it off with the fan fan favorite fantasy Tinder segment, and the first name I have for you guys today is none other than Josh Jacobs, soon to be a second year running back for the Oakland Raiders and a player on my dynasty team. I'll let you one of you two kick this one off. So the thing with Josh Jacobs, um, there's a quote that sticks out, and it's from John Gruden, and he was talking about how they have to get him more involved, and he implied that he was talking about the receiving game too. So all you PPR heads out there, you don't have to stray away from him and limit him to just a standard value, all right? He has value in the PPR too. Uh, DeAndre Washington is out of there, so he's only going to get more targets. Who's, who's the other threat for targets in that offense besides Darren Waller and Tyrell Williams? I mean, A.B. is not coming back anytime soon unless there's something I don't know. That I I mean, there, Ruggs, Ruggs was drafted in the offense. Jalen Richard is a – he's there. Jalen Richard's there. He's a good pass catching back. But the departure of DeAndre Washington does open up 41 targets for the running back position. And I like Jacobs to eat into a good amount of those. Um, do you know where you're swiping on him, Pat? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely swiping right. He, uh, he, he did his service for my fantasy team last year. I mean, you can't, you can't expect more from a rookie. He was solid. And uh, this year, I hope he's elevated into a top, running, top 10 running back status. That uh, The range around 10, it's pretty foggy. Like, there's players from, like, that are ranked RB8, and there's players ranked RB14, and they're – in, in that range, it's pretty much interchangeable. Like, they're not separating each other from from themselves. So, I, I think Jacobs has a chance to elevate himself into that top 10 conversation. Yeah, for, for context, he is pick 21, running back 13 off the board. Jesse, why don't you tell us where you're, you're taking them? I hate to do this, but I'm going super like. Oh, the <laughs> super <laughs> like. He's hot. He's burning. He's okay. burning. <laughs> Allow me to explain. Last season, Josh Jacobs had the, forced the most missed tackles in the entire NFL. Wow. The entire NFL. And he missed three games. Okay? Wow. That's crazy. That and is crazy. Wow. For a lot of the season, he was doing it with a bum shoulder. Like, I don't see a way that this guy gets worse. The Raiders added some serious talent. Um. That's going to make it much harder for safeties to stack the box on him. He's, he's going to dominate. I, if he gets more work in the passing game, which I think he should, 
he's going to surpass 2,000 all-purpose yards easy. Ooh, wow. That is whoa. So whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I mean, I guess that constitutes a super like. I mean, he's backing yeah. up that super like. Wow. Lynn Bowden, Lynn Bowden, they drafted, right? Yep. I see that eating into Jalen Richard. I did too. I agree with you. Josh Jacobs is a guy that I would feel confident with as my RB1. Easy. Yeah, no, we're all going in the same direction here, and I got to break out the super like as well. Oh, wow. Jacobs wow. averaged 14.7 points per game last season. As Pat mentioned, he did miss three games. But the big, the big statistic for me is Jacobs was tied for third in rushing attempts per game, only behind Ezekiel Elliott and Derrick Henry. He hardly featured in the passing game as a rookie, but he's shown, especially at Alabama, he showed he has that skill set that he can be a three down back and he can catch passes. And if Gruden is saying he wants to get more involved in the passing game, I believe that. And watching him play last year, he run, he was like a young Frank Gore. He runs with a purpose. And if you know his backstory, um, he was ho- he lived he was homeless as a teenager. You know why he's running with a purpose. I love the the player. I love the person. And I'm a, I'm a super like I think top five is not out of the question for Jacobs this year. Yeah, and going back to the college context, I I find running backs more attractive when they weren't run into the ground in college. There's certain running backs that get like 30, 35 rushes a game. Like Bryce Love, we haven't heard from in the NFL. He's stuck deep in the Redskins' backfield, and he was a Heisman candidate. But Jacobs at Alabama, he probably got like 10, 15 touches a game. Like at Alabama, they spread the touches out because he had to fight with Bo Scarborough. Um, I, he wasn't there for Derrick Henry, I don't think. But he, I don't he, think so. he wasn't a guy who – was overused in college, which is a good thing, I see. Damian Harris was the uh, other running back on okay. Bama. Okay. So, yeah, you're – and you're completely right. He did not see that many touches, and I think that bodes well for his future. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're all on board the Josh Jacobs hype train. Um, let's, let's get into our next player. And this is another player I personally love, and that is Devontae Parker, who is the player 46 – Wide receiver, 21. Where are we swiping on Devontae Parker? Jesse, you get the, you get the first shift on this one, brother. <laughs> I don't want to rain on Tommy's parade, but I'm swiping left on Parker. You're going left. Wow. Going left, and I have some reasons. But first, let me give you some context, all right? So this is a crazy stat I found. After week four, Parker was the wide receiver, two for the year and you're swiping left on this guy yes but hear me out there's a number of issues one they drafted Tua Tua is going to be worse for Parker than Fitzpatrick was that's a problem for me and you don't know when Tua is going to take the reins rookie quarterbacks historically don't help out their wide receivers and Preston hasn't showed me enough from his career that he can be a wide receiver that Parker, doesn't depend on not the No, you're, are you talking about? I mean, sorry, I meant I meant uh, <laughs> Parker. Yeah, my bad. yeah, yeah. Um, and but my next point was that uh, Preston was injured for a good part of the season, and that's when Parker's volume really went up. Um, another point that I have is that Miami got better in their run game, and they just got better overall. I think that you're not going to see a Kalen Balage 1.9 yards per carry situation they've got some good running backs I think it's going to be a more balanced attack this year Parker hasn't shown me anything from his career that he can be a consistent player so I have to swipe left I respect Tommy Tommy, could you uh make sure that we're on the same page for what his ADP is because I have him going 62 and could you say what wide receiver he's going so fantasy pros has him at pick 46. Wow. Wide receiver 21. Okay, yeah, that I think the key in why I'm swiping left as well. Um I think Jesse made a great point about Preston Smith missing a lot of time. He's definitely going to eat into his targets. If you Preston look at the Williams. Dolphins Oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> if you look at the Dolphins schedule, 
Fantasy Pros has it as the thirty as the toughest schedule for I'm pretty sure four wide receivers. They got New England twice a year. They got Buffalo twice a year. They got the Niners. It it is not gonna be easy. He's gonna have an a top cornerback on him week in, week out. And uh I, I don't I don't know if he could keep up what he had last year. He had him and Michael Thomas were the only two wide receivers with thirteen games of fifty five yards or more. And I don't I know that Fitzpatrick will have the reins for at least the first couple of weeks with uh, Tua coming back, but I think they will try and mix Tua into the offense as quickly as possible to get him that exp- that experience. So uh, I, I got to swipe left. Yeah, you guys brought up basically my two concerns for Parker. And, Pat, I did not know that stat about the Dolphins schedule. That's another interesting thing to look at. I haven't really taken a look at um the t- players schedules yet but yeah um i mean matching up with gilmore twice a year uh what's the try white twice a year yeah. and then obviously the niners that that is that is scary but um i do have to say i am personally of the belief that with two his health concerns Fitzpatrick, I am expecting him to play the majority of the season. Maybe not the whole season, but I do like, I do like him to play the majority. But you, you do bring up a good point. If Tua takes over, I feel like rookie quarterbacks just make wide receiver production a little more erratic. So I wouldn't be super confident um, if Tua were to take over. But at this evaluation. <laughs> I still really like Devontae Parker. He finished the year with averaging 25 and a half points per game over the last five weeks of the season. He was winning you fantasy leagues if you had him on your team. 25 and a half points per game over the last five weeks. And, well, that does exclude the Jets game where he went down with an injury. I, I just excluded that from the calculations. He had, like, two catches – but I think he went down early on in the second quarter, maybe even the first quarter. He went down early, so I took that game out. So it was four weeks where he averaged 25.5 points per game, and that included the fantasy playoffs and the fantasy championship, if your championship is week 16, like most people. (laughs) So he was the wide receiver 11 last year, and I don't know. I think – I think this is this my comparison for him is that he's a girl who's he was like a four, <laughs> but he had this major glow up. Major glow up. And out of nowhere. Out of still, nowhere. People are still sleeping on her. I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sleep I'm gonna sleep on her. I think uh I I'm think she, she did really well one night with a lot of makeup and I don't think she can replicate that performance. I respect that. I think um I respect that opinion. I, I think a little differently. Wide receiver 11 last year, being drafted as the wide receiver 21, I don't know. I think he's one of those guys that could either be a stud or a dud. Like, he could either win you a league or be the reason that you lose a league. And I just – it's too much of a risk. I think if you got, like, a wide receiver before him that was more sustainable and then you can mitigate the risk with someone like Parker – I'd be more confident. I that's a good point, Jess. I think compared to other uh, other wide receivers around him, he does seem to have a lower floor, especially compared to our the next guy we're going to talk about. And unless anyone has any more points on Parker, yeah, no, we're, we yeah we can move on. We can jump into Jarvis Landry, who is the pick sixty four. Wide receiver, 29. And I will let – Pat, I'll let you take this one to start us off. Yeah, I – I mean, Ryan Ryan made up some gr- – made some great points about Jarvis and Odell, and it, it is – it's pretty clear that Baker trusts Jarvis. Um, my main concern uh, with this offense is uh, Austin – for – from Jarvis's point of view, is Austin Hooper coming in, taking taking some targets. Um, but I, I have to super like Landry at this evaluation. If he's going wide receiver 29, um, Tommy, I, I know you're going to back me up with the stats on this one. 
because he has been – I'm just putting it in, in words. I don't have the exact numbers, but I know that he has – He's been very reliable, especially when mixed with Baker. A lot more reliable than Odell, even though I do like Odell better than him. Um, I, I got a super like because I I think wide receiver 29 is way too low. Yeah. Um, I think it's – I don't know if it's way too low. I think it is low, though. and I, I So I'm not going to super like, but I am going to swipe right. I think it's a – fair evaluation I think we're kind of away from the days of him being a 100 catch receiver it could happen again but with the amount of weapons this team has Kareem Hunt Nick Chubb Hooper and Joku um, Odell obviously um, and there's a a couple other wider series there Richard Higgins Um, so I don't expect him to hit the 100 reception mark total like he has done in the past he hasn't done that since he was with Miami though but I do think he's a good pick and he was the wide receiver 12 last year so another this is a similar situation to the Parker one where you're getting someone who finished much higher or you're getting someone way lower than where they finished last year but some context to that wide receiver 12 finish was on a points per game basis, he was the wide receiver 21, which to me is just a better metric to look at because you're getting, it takes away, if you're looking at just the overall finish, it takes away anyone that was hurt and missed a game who was actually having a better season. So wide receiver 21, which does stop, drop him nine spots, but he's going at the wide receiver 29. So it still to me seems like a good value. And I Hooper is talented, but I'm not worried enough to the point where it's going to make me concerned for Jarvis. Like, he's still a guy who's going to command 100-plus targets, probably like 130 targets and catch like 75 to 85 passes. Before, uh, before Jesse gives his take, um, I, I don't think we should penalize Jarvis for um, having that lower points per game points per game status because there will be top wide receivers that are hurt every year and I don't think we should penalize him for his stability for his stability. that is true yeah he's a very durable player um he has missed zero games in his career <laughs> he has not missed a game I just brought it up really quick to check he has holy shit, zero holy shit <laughs> see that we like to see that Knock on wood. Yeah. Are you are you a are you a Jarvis hater? Is that what you're saying? Knock on wood. Like you think he's gonna get hurt this year? You hate Jarvis? Okay. Do you want you want to hear what I really think? I yeah. did too, though. <laughs> I'm barely swiping right. This okay. is a girl that you see on Tinder. She lives close to you. She seems DTF in her pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like she's okay. The only reason you're swiping is because you've been quarantined for two months. That's the only reason you're swiping. I, I'm, I'm very lukewarm on Jarvis Landry. He had hip, hip surgery in the offseason. I think Odell is going to step up this year. He has to. I think he has so. To step up. As you guys mentioned, Hooper is joining the offense. And also something that I saw recently, Kareem Hunt is looking to get work with the receivers. And I, I, it's just another mouth to feed for receiving. Now, for the good things, the reasons why I am swiping right, Baker has to get better. He was so bad last year. I mean, he has to get better. I think if he gets better, Jarvis will be better. Um, and this is a crazy stat I saw. Jarvis is one of three receivers in the NFL to finish in the top 24 of each of the last five seasons. Wow. So the only other two at 29, the only two other two were Evans and Julio. So like he's safe. He's like, Oh, reliable. I like him. I don't love him. That's a great stat. Every past five seasons, he's been in, a top 24 wide receiver. That just shows the kind of consistency you're getting. But I do agree with you, Jesse. This this um, Tinder match does not have a high ceiling. You're, you're playing it safe. You know what you're getting. And 
don't ex- don't expect too much. <laughs> exactly. Um, a lot of a lot of attractive friends in the in the other photo. <laughs> Cheerleader effect. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that'll bring us to our last fantasy Tinder player, and we're gonna round it off with another receiver. And we're going to go to that. We're going to travel to Indianapolis, and we're going to talk about T.Y. Hilton, the, um, the little speedster from Indy. Pick 53, wide receiver 25. So right smack in between Parker and Landry. Where are we swiping on Mr. T.Y.? So for T.Y., I'm going to have to swipe right. Um, I, I had Eric Ebron two years ago. He did not get the work that he got last year, the year before. He had uh, 110 targets two years ago. He had 52 in 11 games last year. That's going to open up a lot of targets in Indy. Um, uh, finally, a reliable quarterback in Indianapolis. I know that he's got a weird release. We can't penalize him. I know that it looks like he's I, – I don't know. Like, I, I don't even want to say what I was about to say. Um <laughs> You could, like you could quarterback in Little Giants. Uh, wait, what'd you? Are you quarterback talking about? in Little Giants. Junior Floyd? Yeah, he's got a Junior Floyd release. Like we don't, we don't like to see that, but he makes it work. He's borderline Hall of Fame. He's got a, he's never made a Super Bowl, but Phil Rivers is pretty, pretty reliable. So Eric mm-hmm. Ebron opens up a lot of targets. It is concerning Michael Pittman joining the offense. Um, he, he's a young talent. Paris Gam- Campbell is gonna, um, get an uptick in looks, but. I think T.Y. Hilton is the only proven receiver on this offense. I mean, the next is, like, Jack Doyle. I, I don't know. Like, like I think Rivers is going to love the connection with T.Y. They're going to be the only men in the locker room over the age of 30 that I know of. <laughs> oh. but, uh, and also the, the O-line keeps everything secure. You got Costanzo and Quentin Nelson. So, Rivers is going to have time to fling his elbow at whatever he wants to. A quick question for um, the Giants fans, since we do have two Giants fans on this pod. Is Phil, and you mentioned how talented Mr. Rivers is, is Phil Rivers more talented than Eli Manning, his fellow draft day compatriot? Who is the more talented quarterback from that? I think class? Phil Rivers might be the more talented quarterback. But Eli Manning is the greater quarterback. <laughs> Come on. If I'm starting a franchise, both of these guys are young. I'm taking Eli Manning. No question. No question. What has Philip Rivers done? Yeah. Not much. Eli Manning has the clutch gene. That's it. Like, e- Eli, uh, you could say that Rivers is, is durable. I, I know Rivers has to be getting up there in – in the passing yards records, Eli's seventh or eighth there. Eli's seventh or eighth in passing touchdowns. Um, I I don't know if you really can compare them with with Eli's playoff track record. Uh, it's not like Philip Rivers has had no talent on his team. He had LT for the first couple of seasons, the the less important LT, not the greatest player of all time. Um, <laughs> and then he's had he's had Keenan Allen. He's had some reliable weapons. Antonio Gates one of the best tight ends of the of the 21st century. So, I mean, he, he hasn't really put it to – I mean, he's never really had a reliable defense either. But um, but Eli, Eli won it. His second Super Bowl, he won it. The f- first Super Bowl, you could make the argument that it was the defense. That defense was ridiculous. But that second Super Bowl, he, he got them there. Yeah, I, did, I don't want to get too sidetracked. So, we can get – we can come back to T.Y., but – I just want I want some opinions to um borderline Hall of Famers no locks there. What? <laughs> um, I'm but, not the goat then if you're saying that. <laughs> for Ty though, for Ty Hilton, um, it's it's difficult for me. We he opened the gates last year and he was on fire. Um, he was posting big numbers in the first three weeks. He was looking like himself. But he did end up suffering multiple injuries, missed six games. And the close of the season, it was – it's difficult to um, 
to look at because he was playing limited snaps. He wasn't playing full snaps, but he did do very little in those snaps. I do like the Phillip Rivers addition. I think it's a better quarterback and probably the best – or definitely the best quarterback T.Y.'s had since Luck was healthy and unretired. But they did draft Michael Pittman – Paris Campbell's coming back from injury. Two guys who are unproven, but two guys that I actually really like, and I know the Colts really like. And the one concern I have about Rivers is his arm strength. Does he still have it in him at his age to maximize, like, the T.Y. Hilton deep threat? Like, what we saw in, uh, in San Diego and then eventually L.A. was Rivers using the running backs and the slot receivers a lot. And I, I actually do really like Paris Campbell at, since if he's playing the slot. I think Paris Campbell's a sleeper pick this year, and I think he's a much better value than T.Y. Um, since we just talked about Jarvis, who's going a bit later, to me Jarvis is just the m- much safer pick here um, considering age, injuries, and the situation – I think T.Y. is a little risky, but T.Y. definitely has the more upside. But personally, I'm going to have to swipe left on T.Y. Hillen. I'm with you, Tom. I'm I'm also swiping left. Can we just laugh at the fact that T.Y. Hilton was born in the 80s? Like, I think that's funny. Like, he's just (laughs) – I'm going to refer – Is it 89? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, that doesn't count as the 80s. I'm going to refer – to a person that we love on the podcast, Ryan Shazier. And Ryan Shazier once said, the best ability is availability. And <laughs> I don't see it Why from you. I don't think Shazier said that. Oh, he said it. He said it. You... All right, we'll take your word for it. He's just, I like T.Y. I want T.Y. I think T.Y. is going to have a bounce back season. But he's not the value that you're paying for him here. I'm swiping left. Yeah, it's not hard to bounce back from what he did last season. And I don't see him getting back to his old form personally. I think it's it's in the realm of possibilities. Like you never know with fantasy. I just it's a it's a little too risky for me, especially when we just talked about Jarvis Landry is going ten picks after him. Some other wide receivers that um, you guys might consider. I'll just I'll read a few names here, and you guys can just say T.Y. or this name. Um, these are players going after him, but all pretty close to him. Um, Metcalf, D.K. Metcalf. Who would you rather have? I, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take T.Y. There. I I think his. Uh, I'd rather take the wide receiver one. And I, I think Hilton could be in the slot. I don't think he's limited to the outside. I think um, with his small frame, he he could have a Keenan Allen vibe with uh, – with Yeah, Hilton. he could play in the slot. I, I think Campbell is their designated slot receiver. But, I mean, Campbell hasn't proven anything. So, if they want their best receiver in the slot, that is a good point, Pat. Maybe T.Y. will move into the slot. Um, Stefan Diggs, Jesse, would you go Diggs or? I, I like. I like Diggs. I would have even had Metcalf, Metcalf over. T-Y. And then here's another name I know you love, Jesse. Tyler Boyd. I am taking Boyd over T.Y. I love Tyler Boyd. <laughs> I, I love Tyler Boyd. He's going to – I mean, he's a reliable 1,100 yards for this year. You can write that in stone. <laughs> That's easy. Everything on top of that is a bonus. And – I mean, yeah, I'm taking I like I like this energy we're getting from Jesse. This isn't something we've had on the podcast, these predictions that he's setting in stone. I'm telling you, like <laughs> I, my God, it, his credibility. I, <laughs> yeah, he's got his credibility on the line. Two thousand all purpose yards for Josh Jacobs. <laughs> put it put it down. Like if if, this, if that's not right, like you can hold me accountable. Like, honestly, I, I want you guys to haze me on my social media. Like, <laughs> please. I'm not going to be wrong. You can, you can book it. Uh, I mean, I, I respect how Jesse's putting his neck out there, but 
I don't know if you guys can turn your backs on these on these old wide receivers. You're you're not respecting AJ Green right now. You're not respecting Ty. Um, I, I still think they got a little bit in the tank, and uh, we'll we'll find out this season. If you're taking an old receiver, I would just go Golden Tate. Like Tate's a good option in the later rounds. I do like Golden. It's really late, and he's consistent. Just a sidebar. Um. <laughs> so on you're on Tinder. You got a 30-year-old. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, wait Tommy, you, you're you allowed to select your age range. You you include that. You include yeah, no, 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 no. You do Tom welcomes Tom welcomes the 30-year-old. You I, include that. Yeah, you do. I, I would dabble. I would, I would dabble. <laughs> I do not dabble. I personally do not dabble. <laughs> I see a Golden Tate comp on Tinder. I'm going for it. What about the TY comp, though? Are you swiping right on the T-Y? I don't know. You That's know? like a very high-risk scenario. Like, it's one of those Facebook moms that has, like, <laughs> the the filters on. You've got the doggy. Like, you don't know. You don't know what you're getting. Like, it could be absolute Karen Central. And There could be a husband in the picture. This is a risky. T-Y is a risky plan. There could be a husband in the picture. You don't know. I mean, there could be some weird, like, kinky shit. Like, I <laughs> Just two years ago, he, he went for 76 catches on 120 targets for 1,300 yards, six touchdowns. I don't think he's too far off. He's he's had some nabbing injuries uh, over the course of his career, but uh, I, I think he could piece together a season. He played the full 16 in 2018, so he's not – he's two years off from that, so we'll see what he could do. Just one yeah. last point on, on T.Y. I'm a little concerned about Naheem Hines. I think he could have a – Said I, no one ever. I'm concerned about that, 99. Said no one ever. I, I think he could have a weirdly successful season. I could see him as being a guy that gets a ton of dump-offs, takes away from targets that could go to T.Y. and others. And the coach has already said that he's going to be – involved in the offense i would be a little bit concerned about that as well i don't know if i'm concerned about that for ty sake but i do think Hines is a great late round pick this year with what they've been saying um pat is swiping right on ty me and jesse swiping left that is going to round up our fantasy tinder segment and we've got one more segment today it's going to be a quick one we're going to be talking sophomore players um, who we think are gonna, we're gonna, t- they're gonna take a step forward, possibly break out this year. Um, and does anyone want to lead us off, or I could start us off? Yeah, I'll, I could start off. I'm, oh, let's hear it. I'm, I'm, I was considering going Hollywood, but I read, I looked into a Baltimore Sun article today that said the Ravens are con- are considering going after Antonio Brown. So that, that would scare me off. So. Yeah, that that's honestly that's becoming a a very realistic possibility. So I wanted to go for my guy T.J. Hawkinson. Ooh. He was the number eight selection last year. He he had a top two vertical in the combine, so he's got that athleticism. He's he's got a four seven forty, which Noah Font was the uh, other top tight end in that draft. He had a four five forty. Um, I think. TJ Hawkinson is going to be on the field a lot more because he provides blocking that Font just doesn't have. Noah Font doesn't have uh, the space for targets that Hawkinson has. Hawkinson is going to be a guy who, after Galladay, he's going to be fighting with Marvin Jones for second in that offense. He he went he ripped off six catches, 131 yards, and a touchdown in his first game as a rookie last year. Um, Matt Stafford, unfortunately, did not finish the whole season. He threw over 30 times every single game that he played. He threw over 40 times in 33% of games. I The Lions lost Darius Slay, so they could be behind in a lot of games. They got that scrub, Desmond Trufant, in the in the secondary. He's not scaring anyone. What's he, like 50? So <laughs> I, I think they could, be, they could be behind a lot. Um, the Lions are looking into becoming a – a very much run first team with DeAndre Swift and carry on Johnson's going to take a back seat. But after like late, late in the season, I think Swift will have the keys to the castle. Um, but Hawkinson, he's a very valuable blocker. 
So he will be on the field near the goal line. He will be there for that play action across the middle, easy touchdowns. You can put it in stone that he will have at least – at least eight touchdowns this year. Wow. So, I was the owner of TJ Hawkinson in our Dynasty League. Um, and after the first week of the season, I thought I, 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 thought I had the next Gronkowski. <laughs> and um, you a couple like, weeks later... Injuries, injuries. Yeah, a couple weeks later, I was a little, a little disappointed. But um, he's, got, he's got an enormous ceiling. He's got all the potential in the world teams. I mean, the lions are literally like maybe the only team to spend a top 10 pick on a tight end in recent years. And they, I, I, I can't think of any tight end that, I mean, Ebron was the other one, but that was the lions too. Was that, was that 10 or was that like, I think that was 10. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's hope for the Lions' sake they don't have another Ebron situation because he turned out to Oh, for Detroit. Detroit yeah. has gone through enough hell. Do not give them any more. Yeah, I, I like Hawkinson a lot. Um, I will take this into my sophomore, and this is a player who had a, a decent rookie season, but it's going a little bit under the radar in my opinion. And that is Deontay Johnson. And he probably wasn't a great fantasy option for you last year. But if you look at the circumstances, you can see why. Once um, Roethlisberger went down, it was just a shit show. It was Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph. <laughs> and That's no funny. one's producing in that offense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was also reported – pretty recently that Johnson suffered a groin injury in week two and played through it the entire season before he got surgery this off season. So that's just something to note, but despite this injury and the horrendous quarterback play, Deontay averaged over 10 points per game and outperformed Juju um, on a per game basis. So not including the games Juju missed on a per game basis, Johnson outperformed Juju Smith's Schuster and I don't expect that to happen this year. I love Juju and I love Deontay Johnson. And that is all on the um, on the contingency of Roethlisberger being yes. healthy. Yeah. Uh, you, got, you got the word there. The contingency of Roethlisberger being healthy. And if Roethlisberger is healthy, we've seen that he can produce multiple top receivers. I mean, obviously – you just look at recent years, Antonio Brown and Juju. And I think Juju, I think, I'm sorry, I think Deontay will be the number one outside receiver on this team. I'm not worried about James Washington, and I don't see Claypool. Unless Claypool just is this stud receiver, I don't, think, I don't see him overtaking Johnson on the depth chart. And Juju is going to be in the slot for, for the majority of the time. And – that if that happens, the the number one outside receiver in a Pittsburgh Ben Roethlisberger led offense, I think Deontay Johnson he really does well. Yeah, I think Deontay Johnson could definitely be a wide receiver too this year. I think top twenty four is not out of the cards, and you're going to get great value with him. Um, I think he's got a really high ceiling, so look to add him in the later rounds of your drafts, Deontay Johnson for a big time sophomore year. And I think at that uh, point in the draft, you're looking for upside. And I think you make a good point that Deontay Johnson could be that guy. I personally don't really buy into it, but I could see why you would think that. I just think that Steelers love to run two tight end sets. They got Eric Ebron this year. I think there's a lot of more mouths to feed in that offense than people recognize. And you've got McFarlane coming in. Who's a, who's a competent pass catcher. I think there's, there's a lot of mouths to feed. I think you could be right. It's just it yet. It's yet to be seen. He's definitely a deep player that you could look to. I do think there are a lot of mouths to feed, but if he's that number one outside receiver, like I expect him to be, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, 
if you're getting that that kind of uh, workload and upside that late in the draft, I'm pretty happy with that. But why don't you cap off this episode with your sophomore breakout player? All right, so I didn't want to do this on my first podcast appearance, but I have to go with the giant here, <laughs> Daniel Jones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, there are boos everywhere. But let me explain, okay? <laughs> okay, according to advanced statistics, Daniel Jones was a top 10 quarterback under pressure. That's That was pretty astounding to me. And just some crazy things. He fumbled 11 times last season in 13 games. That is bound for positive regression. Let's hope so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for my <laughs> mental health state, I pray. Yeah, I pray for something like that. We need to get Nate Solder out of that left, talker, left tackle slot ASAP. He's, he's going to be there to start the season, but I, I want the shift to happen with our new rookie, my new guy, Andrew Thomas. <laughs> yeah, and you touched on that. The Giants have upgraded their O-line. I know that O-line's – First-year O-linemen don't necessarily make a huge impact, but I think anything can be an improvement off of what the Giants had. They needed to supercharge their O-line, and they at least gave it a little bit of a shock. So we'll see. Um, another thing about Daniel Jones is that he rarely had like his key weapons healthy, and he still managed to put out really good performances. Someone like Sterling Shepard, who missed six games, is going to be his best receiver – and it's just going to be very helpful for Daniel Jones to have him. Maybe if Evan Ingram decides to show up for like one, one or two games this season, that'd be great. Um, Jason Garrett takes the reins at offensive coordinator. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's probably not good for quarterbacks, but I'm going to read you something that surprised me. All right, so this is since 2007, okay? This is Jason Garrett's quarterback's per game ranks, okay? So third, eighth, seventh, ninth, eighth, eighth, tenth, seventh, 39th, because Romo got injured, sixth, 14th, 13th, third. That is not like bad at all. Like, and he hasn't really had elite quarterback talent. And some of the throws that I saw um, Daniel Jones make, he's a passer, he's not a thrower. He's a guy that I think is going to make it in the league. Um, Fantasy Pros has him at quarterback 14. I think he's going to blow that out of the water. The Giants, the Giants are not going to be good this year. It pains it. It pains me to say this. They're going to improve. They're not going to. Their defense isn't going to be good. And so Daniel Jones is going to have all the positive game scripts for a quarterback that you would want. He's going to be throwing the ball a ton. I like Daniel Jones. I think he's going to be a, a really good player. If he goes undrafted, you're adding him. I would even take him late in drafts. I think the weapons you like, people might be overlooking. The Giants might be like, that's one of the, if they stay healthy, that's one of the best skill position groups for a quarterback with Saquon, Angram, Slayton, Shepard, Tate. That's a good core to be around Daniel Jones. And if the O-line improves, yeah, I actually, I actually, I know you guys are Giants fans. I'm an Eagles fan, but I actually kind of agree with you. I like Daniel Jones. Yeah, and also the Giants got Shane Lemieux in the draft, who no one is talking about, interior guard, he didn't miss a game in college. He didn't miss a practice in college. He was an All-American his junior year, second-team All-American as a senior. Um, he's only going to make the offensive line better. They're going to have a lot more time. Also, I wanted to make the point about TJ Hawkinson. I forgot to say this. They have a new D coordinator. High-scoring games will happen. That defense will not adjust that quick. They have a young team outside of old-ass Desmond Trufant. So I can get that off my chest. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, there we go. We got TJ Hawkinson, we got uh, Daniel Jones, and we got Deontay Johnson as our three players who we think are going to step it up next season. If we have a season, let's let's all hope and pray. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Tommy, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, that'll that'll just about do it for the episode. I've got the the beach shirt, the beach hat on. 
I'm heading to the beach this weekend. I, I can't wait. I can't wait, man. Um, but yeah, great episode with you guys. Um, I think that just about does it. Awesome. All right. See you, I'm boys. A leprechaun now. I'm a leprechaun. <laughs>